Hey legends, I'm Eliza Lee and you're listening to The Making of an Incredible MD, the podcast for aspiring medical professionals. Each week, we'll bring in a current MD student and a practicing physician to talk about an important topic in the medical field. From the effects of climate change to the influence of social media on our health, we'll uncover a maze of different perspectives and end each episode with an ethical dilemma for us all to consider. Stay tuned as we literally hear the making of these incredible MDs unfold right before our ears. Today on Station 8, we have another one of our Hallard Gamsat tutors and University of Melbourne examiners, Mish, interviewing one of our aspiring med students, Jay. And before we hit record, we give each student three minutes to read the station and then they have eight minutes to respond. And today, the station that Jay read was this. You are volunteering at a homeless shelter when a woman who is dying from an alcohol-related liver disease approaches you. She has symptoms of long-term alcohol abuse, including yellow eyes and skin and significant pain. She confides that she hasn't had a drink in two days, but wants to get hammered once more before she dies. She tells you that her last bottle of vodka is hidden in her locker. Alcohol is not allowed at this homeless shelter, and there is another woman a few metres away who is closely watching your interactions. And the first question Mish asked was, what would you say or do? With this condition, but I do think that in the situation she's in, in the homeless shelter where there is a no tolerance for alcohol, and as there's other people around, you have to set an example and... You know, I think you wouldn't allow the woman to drink the bottle of alcohol she has hidden. I think perhaps you would find other ways to help her, um, maybe get to know her, whether that's counselling she needs, whether it's other areas of her life she can find joy in in those last few days that she's dying. Yeah. No worries. Um, And what ethical considerations are raised by this situation? It raises um, issues of... In the homeless shelter, there's the situation of abiding by the laws of the shelter. Obviously, they are providing, you know, a sanctuary for certain people. So I think you have to abide by their laws and um, follow in the in the direction that they want to go. And obviously, that then sets an example for people at the shelter who may be struggling with similar conditions. There are also the ethical considerations of the woman herself and the quality of life for her and whether it will be you know, you have to weigh up the options, whether it would be worth it for her indulging in her last few days and enjoying in the pleasures that she has or whether the detriments to her health would be too disastrous and, yeah. And how might logic and emotion interact in making a decision in this situation? I think emotionally it would be very hard being confronted with this um, woman in this state and obviously logically you're thinking it's not allowed, you know, the detriment to your health would be too much and then you'd be faced with this emotion of this woman and just sort of giving her her last wishes in her final days. And I think you, at the end of the day, you have to, in the gentlest and most sensitive way you can, most empathetic way, you have to let your logic take sort of the forecharge there and, yeah. And how can individuals express empathy without imposing their own values? I think that would be just really stepping into the the other person's shoes and considering what they are truly going through and without imposing your views, whether you support or don't support the, the use of alcohol in that situation or the condition she's in, I think you have to consider you know, what what she is going through, sort of stepping back from your values and really immersing in her situation. Okay, um, so you have approximately five minutes to go. Is there anything else you'd like to add with any of those questions? No, I don't think so. (laughs) Yeah, okay, that's fine. That was a quick response from Jay and now over to Mish for the feedback. All right, cool. That was quite a quick uh, scenario which is fine. It's always good to be concise with uh, your responses as well. But also being able to flesh it out is also really key. So in terms of feedback, let's just have a look through things. Before I do start, how did you just feel like you went? Um, not, not great. I didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel confident answer. Like, I feel like I can give an initial answer, but then I'm not sure how to, as you said, flesh it out for that long. Yeah, that's what I'm not confident with. Yeah, that's fine. I think you've, you you covered a lot of important points when you were going through the, the answers and I'm sure 
assessors will tick you off on some of those aspects, which is good. But I think in these kinds of scenarios, when you have such a long period of time still to, to go, it's just good to maybe um, expand on things a bit more yep. uh, if you can. But that will all, all come with practice anyway. And I'm yep. sure you'll recognise some important principles and ideas would be relevant in each of these questions. And then you can go ahead and kind of expand on that as well. Yeah. I might just start by just talking about your general flow and your uh, manner. I think it was really well done. I think you really went ahead and kind of answered each question the best that you can. And um, the tone and the way you spoke to me was um, quite good. Um, it didn't sh come off <laughs> aggressive or kind of bored um, at all. So um, overall, really well, well done there. In terms of just unpacking each of these questions now, I'm just going to go through and kind of explain some of the things that I yep, might sure. add in, um, in each question. And then that can give you a good idea of points that you could have expanded on as well. So for the first question, what would you say or do? Um, you mentioned that obviously it is in quite a fragile state and you wouldn't allow her to drink alcohol. And you'd possibly look at other avenues such as um, looking for counselling or other ways which could provide a joy in, these, in this last period of her life, and which are all really good points. But I think in this scenario, uh, in this question in particular, it's really important to kind of gather information before you take action. Um, so what I mean by this is you want to make sure you have a really clear picture about what's going on in this scenario. And that's to kind of ensure that you're unbiased and you're not dismissive um, when you're looking at kind of gaining the understanding of each of these parties. So example, for example, this woman, she's part of a homeless shelter and that could bring a lot of bias um, into your own judgments, even unconsciously. So it's really good to kind of first go into it, figure out what the situation is, figure out what the reasons behind her wanting to drink alcohol are. So what I mean by this is you might look into um, if there's any root causes as to why she's wanting to drink. Is there issues that she's having at the shelter that she wants to take her mind off? And those are some important points to kind of figure out what's going on and then take action afterwards. It's also very important to kind of look at the policies regarding the homeless, homeless shelter. I know you touched upon about it a bit later in the scenario and your answers as well. But it's a good way to kind of show that you're acknowledging that you're part of a bigger organisation in this case and you're willing to seek help from within the shelter itself and recognise that there's policies in place for dealing with these kinds of issues as well. So that's all, always a good point to make. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, um, I would also like to talk a bit about the fact that she's in quite significant pain and she seems to be suffering a lot from the long-term alcohol abuse. So that, again, is something that you might choose to explore. You might choose to explore the idea of seeking medical assistance for her, which you kind of touch upon it as well, again, with the counselling aspect. But the fact that she is in significant pain, um, if there's possible avenues to kind of mitigate that pain and help her feel a bit more comfortable within the shelter, that's always something to consider. And it kind of shows an, an assessor that you're not looking at just that main issue, you're exploring every single aspect of yep. that scenario as well. And that's something that you are expected to do, even in any other scenario you come across in real life. It's not just the bigger issue, but also looking at what other aspects that you might need to address in the meantime. Okay. Sure. Going on from that, following the fact that you've kind of gathered information, you would then proceed to take action in this case. That could mean a quick statement kind of signposting whereby you go, okay, now that I've figured out what is going on, I would then proceed to potentially look for a compromise for this woman. Is there a potential for her to drink off premises in this case, if, it's, if that is what she wants to do? And that way you, you kind of are able to accommodate both the homeless shelters policies as well as the um, homeless woman's interest in this case as well. Further to that, I'd probably also think about the reason as to why she's not willing to listen and, and if they aren't something that could be justified, emphasising the need to kind of bring it up with higher ups in this situation, the, the ones who run the homeless shelter exactly as well. Does that all make sense? Um, yeah, so, so I should give like specific examples of what I would do rather than a general. So instead of saying, like I kind of I just said I would look at this and then do this or whatever, I should like tell like a story almost, start yeah. with the problems and then sort of give a definite solution, talk to yeah. higher ups or that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. So it should, it should be like you're actually literally in that scenario and it's like you're seeing it unfold for yourself what action 
would you take in that scenario? So think of it like you were actually that person who is volunteering at that homeless shelter okay. and then act accordingly in that case. And it's important to kind of have that structure where you first gather information and then look to take action. That's the most important point to make for yeah. that question. So moving on, the second question was what ethical considerations are raised in this situation? For this question, you talked about the fact that you need to abide the laws of the shelter, um, the idea that this is a sanctuary for other people as well. It's a shared spot for everyone. So it can often set an example, especially to those with similar conditions who might be suffering from alcohol abuse as well, as well as the um, ethical considerations regarding her indulging in this pleasure, especially while she is having a terminal illness and the detriments that might come with that in terms of her overall health, which again, I'd like to mention are all really good points and stuff that I'd also mention as well. So props to you for that. For this question, I think, again, it's important to approach it with some kind of structure. The reason I always emphasize structure is because not only is it useful for you when it comes to having a layout to go by and making sure that you've kind of ticked all the things that you do want to talk about and you're not really rambling on. It's also helpful for the assessor because they can see your mindset and your thought process as you're going through and answering this question. Yeah. So, for example, in this case, what structure would I take? Well, I'd take the approach where I consider each party involved in this scenario. So what I mean by that is if we look back at the scenario itself, we notice that, yes, there's a homeless woman. There's also me volunteer, as a volunteer of this homeless shelter. There's the homeless shelter itself, the organisation and the, the bigger role that plays as well as finally that other woman who is standing a few metres away who's closely watching the interaction. So I might start off when I'm answering this question by saying, in this case, I'm looking at the ethical considerations. I'd do so by examining how it would affect each of the parties involved. So firstly, I'd look at the, the homeless woman and look at the ethical considerations there, which you did really well. So I think the, the important point to make is the fact that there's a conflict in whether the health of the homeless woman of the homeless woman versus granting her wishes while suffering from that terminal condition in allowing her to drink alcohol. So there's obviously some kind of conflict there. The second kind of major thing that needs to be considered is your own role as a volunteer and how it might affect your position within this organisation if you were to help her in consuming this alcohol. The third thing I would look at is the homeless shelter policy breach and like the reputation of the shelter and how it could be affected if the news of this breach were to go out, essentially. And then finally, I'd look at the bystander's opinion on the homeless shelter. If she's watching over this interaction and you are condoning this kind of behaviour, that could obviously sway her decision making in the future and how she acts in similar scenarios as well. So showing that kind of proper structure when it comes to addressing each party and how they're involved in, in the sense of the ethical considerations is a really good way to go about. Yeah. For the third question, you had the fact that it's very confront, confronting. Obviously, there's a big kind of determinant on health here as well. And the fact that you try to approach it in like an empathetic way. And with that in mind, you still ensure that logic takes full charge here because obviously the policies regarding the homeless shelter are a big priority for you, which are, again, all good points. And I think um, you've done well to kind of um, touch on a few things regarding logic and emotion and how they interact in this case. Again, I'd try to look at it <laughs> in terms of provide some kind of structure yeah. when it comes to answering the question. So in this case, what, what I might do is I might first look at the um, emotional aspect of this scenario. The idea that she has a terminal illness is likely to draw a lot of sympathy from you as an individual and it might encourage you to take it easy on her because of the fact that she's suffer suffering from like a terminal illness in this case. Another thing to consider is the fact that you might recognise or feel that it's not going to harm a lot of people if she were to drink in a very controlled environment. And that again can sway your decision making if you feel if it doesn't calm her cause harm to any other individuals and she's just having a terminal illness, I might just let her pass with this case. So those are some emotional aspects that you might want to consider. Alternatively, you might then signpost and say, I might proceed on to talking a bit more about the logic aspect of it. So the fact that there is a lot of policy regarding the 
use of alcohol um, within the homeless shelter and the need to uphold professional standards, which the homeless shelter have built their organisation on, essentially. I might also think logically about the fact that there are certain downstream consequences of being lenient because it can often lead to these grey areas in future situations if you're or allowing this behaviour um, in this case. And then finally, you might try to tie it up with a bit of your opinion, which you did well, and you showed how you would allow logic to kind of forecharge your, deci your decision making in this scenario, which is um, a good thing to do in some cases. And then I might even add something regarding how it affects situations in a medical setting. Because obviously, in, in most cases, you might be, you're probably looking to get into medicine. So there, there is an opportunity there for you to show how emotion and logic interact in a, in a professional setting like in the hospital. That might be talking about the example of how doctors often have to deal with emotion and that conflict with logic when they're looking at patients, especially if they have had a long rapport or built a strong rapport with them especially. Yeah, I just have one question. Um, just with the, the questions that they give us, where they sort of have two options, are you better at giving an opinion or are you better just considering both sides and you know, weighing up the pros and cons of both? Or like with the logic question, am I better off saying, I think I would go with logic here, I would go with emotion? Yeah, so I think obviously it is quite difficult picking a side, essentially. I think the most important thing is to show your assessment or your ability to kind of assess both sides. And then you can, I would say, provide an opinion. Okay. Unless it's like a complete red flag in that your action is completely wrong. I don't think assessors worry too much about your decision making as long as you can justify why you're acting in a certain manner, for example. And as long as it's not callous or like malicious in, it, in its intent, essentially. Sure. Okay. Thanks. All right. So final question, how can individuals express empathy without imposing their own values? So here you talked about stepping into other, the other person's shoes, um, looking at whether you do or not support her situation and considering what she's going through in that case as well, which are again, um, good points to make. And it kind of really unpacks that idea of empathy really well and that definition behind empathy, which is to kind of be able to take on the perspective of another person. In this case, you'd also be see how it applies in this scenario. So talking about the fact that there could be a lot of bias involved with looking at um, or um, talking to homeless people, a lot of like preconceived ideas that some people might have. And it's important to kind of put those aside and kind of deal with the situation irrespectively of which parties are involved in this case. So to do that, you might use strategies like assessing the pros and cons and, and then kind of seeing how they're applicable in this situation. And then also recognising how, in this case, to be able to make sure the patient's autonomy or that individual's autonomy is upheld in this case, because that's obviously very paramount. That's kind of addressing the fact that you don't, you're not trying to impose your own values. You're more likely trying to gain information about the situation, provide the pros and cons to them so that they can ultimately be the decision maker for their own life in this case. And that's something that's often talked about even in a medical setting as well. There's an very much an importance on patient-centred care and being able to provide treatment that does well to kind of share the opinions of both the patient as well as anyone else involved in that situation. Does that all make sense? Yeah. And I think it is quite daunting um, just doing an interview first and first. Yeah. In those cases, one important tip that I would give is to kind of even take a second or two just to gather your thoughts for each question. It's so hard to kind of as soon as I answer a question, just immediately have like a, a yeah. full on response prepared. So it might just be a case of taking a second or two to have a bit of a structure to how you're going to approach the question and then go from there. I'm sure an assessor won't mind you doing that. And it's not as awkward as you might think it is. Okay. <laughs> I think um, my, main, my main thing I have to work on is structuring the questions before I go in and answer them. So you helped a lot with that. Thank you. So oh, many considerations to be had and well done to Jay for putting herself out there to have a go at something she may not have ever thought about before. I hope this is helping you with your MMI prep and thank you to all the wonderful students who have been emailing us that this has been a great resource for you. Keep it up and if you ever want more personalised feedback like students like Jay, the link to our mock MMI rounds is in the show notes below and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye!